Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Daily Version of the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. If you're watching live on YouTube, not live, obviously recorded on YouTube, uh, it is another Jorah-centric podcast. Uh, let the cat downstairs today. Serves me right for uh, waking up a little bit late. So, yeah, you're the co-host, bud. I know, I know. Lay down. Get out. Stop showing your butt to everyone. It's just, I shouldn't even do the podcast. But, uh, you know what? Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about podcasts with my co-host, Jorah the Cat. If uh, <laughs> if it's a cute addition or a no... Oh, look at you. He's just lounging on the... Da- oh, there you go. Good boy. <laughs> it's crazy here. Crazy house. Um, here we are, June 11th, 47, 47 days until Iron Man Lake Placid, our redemption race for this year. Uh, had a great day of training. We're going to get into that in just a minute. I do want to remind you that uh, the ordinary 2020 Ordinary Marathon is open for super early registration. Uh, if you register today or by June 23rd, you will be eligible for the Ascension Multisport Garmin giveaway. We're giving away a Garmin Vivo Active 3. What are you doing, cat? Oh, Garmin Vivo Active 3. I'm telling you, you got to watch the YouTube video. It's worth it. Um, I think I like them. I like them here. Anyway, the Garmin uh, Vivo Active 3 will be given away on June 23rd to one lucky winner who registers early for the 2020 Ordinary Marathon. I got to tell you guys, I got the logo this morning. We got the logo set up. It is awesome. It looks great. I can't wait to throw it on T-shirts. Um, you guys are going to see it. You, actually, I think I tweeted it out this morning, so it's out there. It's out there. It's looking good, looking snazzy. i got to update the website and all that good stuff, and uh, and we'll get on that today. Uh, one other, you know, a couple people I wanted to congratulate from over the last weekend that I missed yesterday. Uh, Angela Fillmore finished a 5K. <clears throat> she said she, had, she did really good. She had a really good time, a time that she hadn't seen in a while, so congratulations to Angela. Um, Andy Belanger, uh, he, he did his own Ironman, set his own Ironman course, in his uh, in his hometown, just decided to get up and go do an Ironman. Uh, completely unsanctioned, no medal, no shirt. That takes guts, man. That's a good job. Good job, Andy. Uh, very impressive, very impressive. Um, you know, we talked a lot yesterday about sleep and the importance of sleep. And in, in regards especially to making important decisions and prioritization when it came to sleep in terms of training. And uh, And last night, I got on the bike around, I don't know, 8.45. So a little bit on the later side. I did about a little over an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, something like that, on the bike. There was a couple of hard intervals there that I actually set some personal bests and I was very happy. Happy with the ride. I didn't wind up not doing a run. Uh, I did yesterday morning. I did strength training. My elbow was fine. It, it made it through. I actually finished uh, three sets of 15 for 165 pounds on the bench, which was how much do you bench? How much do you bench? Which was, you know, that's good. I'm going to move up to 175 uh, later in the week. So uh, I'm telling you, man, I'm just I'm just shocked at the progress there. It's uh, all you got to do is just keep doing it and be consistent. And you'll improve. It's amazing. But I felt good. And then I went swimming yesterday. I hadn't gone swimming in a long time. And it definitely showed. It's been about four weeks. And um, it definitely showed. And I think, it, you know what? What I learned yesterday was not a good idea to go swimming after you do upper body strength training. It just it wears you out. Um, I also, you know, I had put together this video of me swimming that I haven't released yet. And maybe I should. I, I keep talking about it and I, and I haven't done it. So maybe I should. I'll work on that today too. Um, but anyway, I said it to some people that, that know swimming. And they gave me some pointers and and some tips. And I actually, I'm still kind of, you know, uh, looking for some feedback in certain areas. So there's that. <laughs> but it was like, and I think I mentioned this once before. So I apologize for using the same joke or the same situation. But I go out in the pool and now it's like I used to just swim. I used to just go out there and just swim and not really think about it. And now it's like I'm thinking about everything, my arm angle, uh, you know, wh- where am I hitting the water? Where, you know, what's my angle at when I pull through? Holding my breath versus blowing out when I'm got when I put my face back in the water. Uh, apparently, you're not supposed to hold your breath. And trying to keep my my 
sort of like my backside, my legs and everything up a little bit higher so there's less drag. So I'm constantly thinking of all this stuff and it's like Tin Cup when he just put, when he screws up his golf swing and he's got all the gadgets and he's trying to fix everything at once and you just, you can't, you know, like golf, you want to fix everything at once so you always have something on your mind and you're trying to have three things in mind in one swing and you just can't do it. Same thing for swimming. You can't really fix everything at once. And I wind up sitting there going swimming back and forth, just thinking about every little thing. And then, you know, when I think about my arm angle too too much, then I realize like I'm dragging again in the water. And when I think about uh, trying to keep my legs up, then, you know, my arm angle is screwed up and I'm not, and I'm holding my breath again and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I almost, I'm almost ready to just kind of scrap it and just say, all right, just swim, man just swim. I mean, I made it the first year I made it around that lake in 125 and I was happy with that. So maybe that, you know, and maybe when I get the wetsuit on too, you know, the wetsuit is very buoyant. It helps you kind of stay up. So I think that maybe that'll have something to do with it too. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But, you know, I do have to get in the pool a little bit more consistently. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to strength train. You know, I talked about yesterday making a schedule for myself and I started it, didn't finish it. But it's fine. I just wanted to make some progress. So Monday and Thursday, I think, are going to be strength training days. And then that leaves, uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, we're going to do yoga in the morning, and we're going to go swimming those days. Perfect. That way the upper body isn't taxed from lifting before going swimming. Uh, and it still leaves the evenings for bikes and runs and stuff like that. And then the weekends are mainly going to be our long run, our long bike, and long brick workouts. So all in all, I feel like, a, you know, yesterday's little exercise, see you later, Jory, he's taking off. Um, yesterday's little exercise of trying to get a schedule together, I think all in all is going to be beneficial. Now, we also talked about the importance of sleep. So I got I got on the bike last night. Well, really, let's, let's start at the back. And I got off the bike at about, you know, 10 o'clock, maybe a little after. And uh, I had watched the first, pretty much the first quarter and a half of the NBA finals. And I was kind of into it. You know, Durant had just got hurt. Um, I used to be a Knicks fan, but I'm not really any longer. Uh, they did a few things that I disagreed with in the past, and so I kind of just jettisoned them. And then I kind of enjoyed watching their failure over the years. It's kind of been like a like a, a nice thing for me. I'm sort of – I was – I'm not really a hardcore fan of any team, but I when I was in New York, I gravitated towards the Nets. You could always get tickets. They were actually pretty good when I was there. Made the finals two or three years in a row. They were like the Buffalo Bills of the uh, of the NBA for a while there. They never won it, but they got close like three years in a row. Um, but after I moved to Boston, then I kind of, then Boston got Kevin Garnett, and I kind of gravitated towards them. I, I'm losing my story here. I I go off on tangents all the time. You guys got to stop me. This is why I need a co-host to be like, dude, get back in line. Anyway. I get off the bike and now I have choices. I, you know, Stephanie's in New York, baby's sleeping. And I'm like, you know, I could sit here and watch the second half of the game. Um, that would be fun. I had my Madden controller in my hand. I'm like, I could play some Madden at halftime and then watch the end of the game. And then I kind of remembered about what I was talking to you guys about yesterday, which was prioritizing sleep when it comes to training and when you're in that training mode and I am in the training mode with 47 days left to go, um, you got to make sacrifices sometimes, especially, you know, I mean, look, when I was younger, maybe I could get away with like watching the game until, you know, midnight and then trying to go to sleep and wake up at five o'clock. Uh, but that doesn't happen. I'm 45 now. It doesn't happen anymore. I, I need my hours of sleep. It's very hard to wake up if I don't get them. So, you know, I, I kind of, I, I just said, all right, I'm going to do the responsible thing. And so I, I went to bed. I went to bed about 1030, um, made the right choice or what I thought, you know, what I thought was the right choice. Now, I fell asleep pretty quickly and I'm usually the kind of person that sits awake and lies awake and worries about a hundred million things. And I do have a lot going on lately. So it's like one of those things where it's just everything's on my mind, but I crashed pretty hard, pretty quickly last night. And then fast forward about five hours, it was 3.30 in the morning and I woke up, I woke up from sleep. And uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you wake up and you don't know what time it is. It's dark though, so you're happy, especially nowadays, because you know, it starts getting light around 5 a.m. here. Uh, but for, for the time being, it's dark, which means I know it's before five, so I still have some time to sleep. And I'm kind of like wondering, all right, 
how much sleep do I have left? How much sleep? So you look over, I grab my watch, and it's 3.30. Ah, all right. Because there's nothing worse than picking up that watch and thinking like, all right, you have like two hours of sleep, and then you look at it, and like your alarm's going to go off in like five minutes. <laughs> right? So it's the, that's like the worst feeling. Um, but I was good. I, you know, I'm like, oh, I got all the sleep. And then the only problem was I couldn't fall back to sleep. I sat in bed. I laid there in bed and just... I couldn't get back to sleep. And it's just like, you kind of lay in there and you know you haven't slept and you're kind of, you're not going to sleep and you're like, what's going on? And blah, blah, blah. And then you look down, it's four o'clock, it's 4.30, it's five o'clock. I think, you know, then I wound up setting my alarm back at another half an hour. I'm like, oh, I just need a half an hour. Um, and then it went forward 10 minutes and I just was like, all right, even the half hour and I turned the alarm off and then I crashed. Then I crashed for about an hour. So I woke up at seven, right around seven, maybe quarter to seven. And uh, I'm like, you know, that freaking didn't work. <laughs> that advice didn't work. Get to bed early. I cost myself like two hours of sleep. Um, but you know what? Hey, you're, you're, you're rested. You're in bed. Uh, it's, you know, better than, I guess, being up in front of the TV late at night. So I'm going to say, hey, it was a good habit. It was a good effort, good try. But uh, sometimes... You know, nature takes over, it doesn't let you sleep, and there's nothing you can do about it. So that's kind of what happened to me. I'm going to still try to stay focused and uh, and not succumb to those temptations of, you know, especially now that there's going to be a game six, right? Uh, did, did, was there a hockey game last night too? Is that series still going? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, so yesterday, another thing I did yesterday. That's a little crazy. I uh, I applied for the USA Triathlon Coaching Level 1 certification, which is a weekend course. And look, I get it. You know, I say it on the show all the time that I'm no expert. Uh, And I don't pretend to be. And, you know, there are people out there, and we've had them on the show, people out there that know everything that they're doing. They know, you know, they know medical, kinesiology, uh, all that good stuff. You know, I mean exercise to the nth degree. And I don't know that. What I do know is training. What I do know is the hard work that gets put into it. What I do know is uh, is how I formulate my training plan, even though lately I haven't been doing well. But you know what? Um, it's something I, re- I love doing, obviously. So I thought, you know what? Let me go take the training class. And the training class is in Tempe, Arizona. So I got to fly to Tempe. But first of all, I, I'm not even guaranteed to get in. I mean, there's like a They take 40 applicants. I don't know how many people apply. And they ask me for my coaching experience, which is really nil other than this podcast and talking to coaches and and having a coach and doing triathlons and that kind of thing, which I think stands, you know, it does account for something. And I think it does, um, I think it makes me an eligible candidate, you know, so I don't, and I don't know, it's, I really, it all depends on how, if they get a thousand applications and they only take 40, I'm probably on the outside, but if they get 38 applications and they have openings for 40, I'm in, right? So we'll see. And I, so I tweeted it out and I was shocked at how many people actually like liked that tweet. And I'm thinking, all right, are these people just seeing it on their feed and they're thinking, oh, good for this guy and uh, you know, like that tweet? Or are you guys all potential clients? Uh, you see where I'm going. You see where I'm going. Um, I, I got a lot of, in mind about what we could do with coaching certification uh, in terms of like, I mean, geez, we have a big group of people here, all you guys training, all of you guys working hard. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of ideas. We're going to have to deal with that in the future. Obviously I need to, to take the course, pass the, pass the test, do all that good stuff. Um, obviously I'm going to be learning a lot. So, uh, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but really guys, super supportive on Twitter. Amazing. I, I you know, I always say about you, you look at almost any other community, you know, you look at, geez, like politics or sports teams or video games or what, you go into like any other community on, on Twitter and it can be, they can be, people can be mean, they can be angry. Uh, you know, they are, they don't treat each other properly. They, they, you know, they don't talk to each other like human beings. Uh, but in the running community, one of the only ones out there, always supportive, uh, always got good things to say, you know, rarely improper. 
And, uh, and I got to pat ourselves on the back for that. Good job, running community. We're, uh, you know, we're doing good things out there. And hey, bud. And um, he's back. Jorah is back on the desk. And I, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like it's a it's just a great community, and it's only building. And you know, if you guys, you know, you know, you know, our discussion group we talk about it all the time on Facebook, uh, facebook.com backslash groups black backslash uh, ordinary marathoners. It's a closed group. We'll put you right through. If you add yourself to it, join the conversation over there. Great people, guys. Great people posting great things, doing great things. Whether you're a beginner rolling off that couch for the first time and you just need a little bit of encouragement or whether you're out there doing, you know, uh, ultra marathons or setting your own Ironman course and doing it on a weekend for fun, uh, whatever level, whatever level you have support over there. So check it out if, if you want, if you want, join the group. Um, I know we haven't done an interview on the podcast in quite some time. We haven't had a guest on here. I've had a couple scheduled and they kind of fell through and we're rescheduling things and moving things around. Um, Thursday, we're going to be having Christina Us in the studio. Christina is the author of a book called The Adventures of a Girl Called Bicycle. And I mentioned her a couple times in the last couple weeks. My, my daughter met her through the school. She's a local author. Uh, my daughter met her, then had lunch with her. And we went to Barnes and Noble. My daughter's like, I want, can you buy me the book? So we found the book. We bought the book. She's reading the book. So I reached out to her. She's coming on the podcast on Thursday. Really looking forward to hearing her story. Uh, she rode her bicycle across the country. I think she did east to west and north to south. She's done them both. And uh, really looking forward to, to discussing her uh, her experience and her adventures on the podcast. So we do have some guests coming soon. And uh, so don't, you know, hold your horses. Don't don't give me any crap for that. It's coming. It's coming. I swear. This is going to be a good interview, too. I, I really I really uh, have high hopes. Um, a little bit of sad news, I think. Um, our local running store, and I'm not even going to say the name anymore, because until I find out what happened, I don't really want to, uh, I don't really want to even give them any credit. Um, but I believe there, it's under new management, and there's something went down. Uh, that I don't know. And I, I hesitate to even talk about it, but they were a sponsor of our ordinary marathon. And, uh, I'm going to go in the store today and pretend I don't know anything and then, uh, and see if I can get the story of what the hell happened. But apparently, let's just say that the corporate entity of, um, of our local running store came in and just cleaned house. And I don't know why, because they were doing such good things there and, and really, uh, such a tight knit community over there that I'm just shocked. I'm shocked, and I don't know what's going on. Uh, I just think, uh, you know, I, I now as of now I won't be shopping at that store for sure. But I got to figure this thing out. It's kind of like sad, you know. You go into a store, you know, all the time, almost weekly. I go in there for nutrition. There, I, I always buy my sneakers there, my new running shoes. I'll always buy my shoes there. Um, I've bought Garmin watches to give away from the podcast. I've bought them there, even though they were cheaper on Amazon. I do that to support my local store because they're such good people. They set up our 5K and we were hoping they were going to do it next year. So I, I hope whatever happens here that the fallout uh, doesn't include us losing our 5K or having to do it in a different different area next year with different people. But um, man, it's really like weird news that I just got yesterday. I think we saw someone sent me, Laura Stebbins sent me, someone's blog post about it. Uh, and the interesting thing was we sent some emails to them the other day and they didn't answer them and usually pretty good at that. So we were like, what's going on? Like, why the delay? And maybe this was why. So really sad news. You don't want to lose your local running store. Uh, even better is that their corporate people are supposedly in there running things right now. Uh, my cat is going crazy here. This is insane. I can't let him down here anymore. I think we're done. I think we're done with the joy, with the, with the co, my co, what are irresponsible co host? He's practically ripping down our green screen over here. Uh, anyway. So yeah, sad news that I, I lose in my local running store, one that we were really did a lot of business with. I, I can't even wait to hear the story, like what's going down. Um, but if it's as bad as I think it is for the reasons I think it is, uh, then I'll talk, then we could talk to you about it because I won't be shopping there ever again. And, uh, you know, I just, I don't like when you see corporate entities doing bad things to good people. 
uh, for specific, even personal reasons I have. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people are like that too, but it's just really sad when it hits you locally, you know, and you see it hurt really good people. So I got to get the story still, but, uh, it's just annoying and it, and it's annoying to me because, you know, uh, God forbid it bothers my day. <laughs> it interrupts my day. Um, so listen, that's what we got a good show in today here. I, I wrote a whole bunch of topics down and we got, we hit all of them and we're right about the 20 minute mark. So happy about that. Um, happy that Jordan didn't take down any of the set here in the, in the 20 minutes, even though he's going crazy. And, uh, and we're good. We're good. Good to go. Today's training, guys. I'm going to be doing some yoga. Hopefully, like, I'll, now that I'm done with my 30 day yoga journey, journey is complete. The circle is complete. I don't know. <laughs> uh, now it's time to kind of venture out into new things, you know, different, you know, I don't have a yoga program now. So it's just like, all right. So I see, like, you know, yoga for runners. I'm going to try that. Uh, yoga for the lower back. I'm going to try that because I've had this issue with my low back lately. Um, really it's, it's been two years, so it just doesn't go away. So maybe that'll help. I don't know. Um, it's raining here pretty good. It's only, and it's supposed to rain all day. So I'll be indoors like, you know, more than likely. Um, I definitely need to run today. Didn't run yesterday. And if I have time, then we'll squeeze in another bike tonight. So I think it's all good. I feel like we're going to have a very productive day. Had a good productive eating day yesterday. Uh, didn't eat any crap. Felt really good about my diet. I ate, you know, small meals throughout the day, healthy meals, and feel good about it. Feel good about it. And hopefully, I'm just kind of hoping that, you know, I used to put my weight on this thing, on the sign every day. And uh, I'm hoping that I in two or three weeks that I can kind of report back to you guys and say, hey, you know, it's working. Things are working. I'm at least, you know, I've been hovering between 218 and 225 over the last three or four months. And this morning I was, the last two mornings I was 221. So it's actually, it's gone from 218 up to 215 and now back down to 221. So I think kind of moving in the right direction. Hopefully that continues. Hopefully we kind of migrate towards that 210 mark for race day. 47 days, 11 pounds, maybe, maybe. It's doable without being too detrimental to my strength, you know, muscle uh, muscle loss or anything like that. Um, it's doable. I just got to have the discipline to do it. Um, so I'm trying to keep in mind every time I touch food, what's this doing for me? What is, is this fueling a workout? Is this helping me recover from a workout? Is this uh, good nourishment for what I need during the day? Or is it crap that I don't need, that I don't want, that's going to hurt me in the long run? Um, yesterday, that is what I thought about every time I touched food. And it kind of sucks because food is a habit, right? It's a habit. I walk around my kitchen. I'm like, ah, oh. I, I walk by the cabinet. And it's just natural motion for me to open it. And they'll look in the little snack container and see what's there. And unfortunately, what's there right now is Oreo cookies. And that's a no-no. That's a no-no. So uh, yesterday, I was eight, for whatever reason, uh, you know, I said I, I thought I felt a little different yesterday. I still think I feel that way. I think some. I think a little switch has been turned on. And you know, every time I went to touch the food, I'd go touch the cabinet, and I think to myself, you know what? What's this going to do for me today? Oreo cookies are not working for me, you know? Uh, and really, it was the same thing about going to bed early last night, even though it didn't work out in the long run. It was the discipline uh, to say, going to bed early is going to benefit me more than staying up and watching the NBA Finals. Even though I want to watch the NBA Finals, I wanted to see it. And I think it was a good game. I, I think Toronto missed the buzzer beater, but I don't. I just read that quickly. I didn't really see it. Um what does that do for me personally? How does that help me other than entertain me for a couple hours? It doesn't. It doesn't. Entertainment is a is a luxury at this point uh, and a luxury that I can't afford. I can't afford to accept and it's not going to do me any good. So I'm not going to stay up late. That's the end. And I'm not going to eat Oreos. Please work. Please work. Please work. Uh, that's, that's just a constant fight. Anyway, uh, let's get going on the day. Uh, remember, every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it today, guys.
remember to like our video and subscribe to our channel.